level of protein in that hay if you wrap it. We have all the grain on the farm. We have our own mixer and grinder. I still recommend to have free choice mineral feeders on the wall. About 10 tons of that protein in a, in a grain bank at the feed oh, store. So we don't have a lot of trouble, trouble with the sheep at all. Eight more bales. And you're gonna wish me some luck. Do a night chores tonight. Checking all the lambs, see how they're doing. They look good. Got done hand today. Everything's wrapped up for the way. Looking forward to putting my machinery away tomorrow. So, not too many dirty rumps here, so. I don't think we have too much parasite problems, but I just fed grain. Shut this up. So there's nothing more I can do here. They're all done, so. I'm going to head the next burn. <laughs> Sold two rams today, so I'm pretty happy about that. Get off that gate, you big guy. Go on. Quit being a bully. Check that water. Hey, Ben. Pretty happy with that. Sold two rams. I think there's someone coming tomorrow for another ram. This is the time of year. Uh, 
pretty nice dorset right there. That one right there. Hey, buddy. Come on, Ben. Hey, bud. That's a nice dorset ram right there. I feel it's one of the younger ones. Come on, come on. Show people to the flight. Come on, come on. Yeah, that's a nice dorset ram. Hey, buddy. Well, I better feed these guys. Little guy from Hannibal. Hey. Oh, don't be cocky. Hey, you guys want to get fed? Hey, you're a nice one. Oh, that's I think. Yeah, these are lens tube rams right here. Yeah, you won't get much longer than that. That's a long ram. Hey, buddy, you want to get fed now? Hey? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the rams this year. I think it's the best rams we've ever had. Seems to be every year they seem to get better. So. Uh, we still got a few yearlings left. Hey, buddies. That's a yearling there, a year old. I think this one here is a year old. That one's a year old. That's Monty. We always know Monty. Monty has a nice little look on his head. Hey, Monty's a little itchy. I'm gonna give him some lice powder tomorrow. I hope he doesn't have any lice. But, but anyway, and what are you doing here? Hey, this is not your barn. You should be at the other barn. Hey, I'm just hungry, Arnie. Whoa, a little cocky, eh? Anyways, I better get moving. So these are all January lamb rams. They look pretty good. Oh, there's a stripe on that one. So, that's a big guy there. Well, anyways, they're all fed. So, just seeing the condition of all these, because these guys got a little bit of worms in on summer, and they've really put the weight back on, so looking good right now so I'm just looking at the shape because eventually I'm going to start cutting them a little back in the green Glad's actually put a lot of weight on too he's still not in the greatest shape but Glad's an old guy eh? and that's a that's a QR from Handsome that's actually a really good lamb. I think he's a year old now. Anyways, better head to the next barn. Can't do anything anymore here, so they have enough hay for tonight. Leave them alone. I'll see them in the morning. My last barn to feed. Come on, Dan, move. These, these are all breed, breeding groups, so put the lights on here. A lot of the first timers in here. First timers. First timer. So, these guys are doing. 
Everybody looks good, so I guess I'll give them a little bit of the grain because we're just trying to flush them a little bit that they breed better. So they're all fed. They get a few pails of corn for the whole barn because we're flushing them, so we want them to release their eggs and make lots of eggs. It's like an energy boost, makes them produce more eggs. And uh, I think Lynn was talking about the other day, I guess one of our viewers um, asked a question about uh, what to feed sheep. But when you're, when you're talking probably about, uh, when you're probably talking about feeding sheep, uh, you should have a little bit of knowledge about what you're feeding them. So, I'm sure Lynn talked about it, and I didn't know what she said, but, but not questioning what Lynn said, but I'll just give you some information what I think. I've had animals my whole life, so I have a little bit of knowledge about it. I'm not perfect about it, but I'm, we're always guessing, I guess, and what works for us doesn't always work for somebody else. So, I see a kitten back here. Sorry about that. Gonna check this out. That's a little kitten right there. See him in that blue feeder? Anyways, so, you're looking for body condition on the sheep. So you can see all these sheep here, the backbone isn't showing. I'll show you one sheep that's showing right here. These two here, you see how the wool's parting in the back? But what happened with these two ewes, uh, they were had babies really late in the spring and they were just weaned a month ago. So they really aren't in prime shape to get rebred back. If these two sheep don't get bred back, uh, no harm done. Uh, but we just put them in a the group and just see what, see what happens. But getting back to the feed, uh, we feed whole corn to these ewes. Uh, there's, now the thing, with, the thing that's what's wrong with whole corn is there's not a lot of protein in whole corn. For an animal to have a good diet, they have to have a certain amount of protein. We are feeding whole corn to these sheep, but these sheep are getting wrap hay, and that hay that's wrapped. There's that little kitten right there. See him there? Hey, buddy. So, getting back to my conversation. So, these sheep are getting wrapped bales of hay. Anytime you wrap bales of hay, there is a, little, a higher level of protein in that hay if you wrap it. Uh, it just becomes wet. It just becomes more available to the sheep. Better than dry hay. But if you can't wrap hay, uh, sheep should have a little bit of protein. So where we're, where we're getting our protein from is our, we're getting all our protein from the wrap bales that are, have a high count of alfalfa. Alfalfa is extremely high in protein. So that's how our sheep are getting their protein. Okay? And that's why we can get away with feeding whole corn. So we feed whole corn and they're getting their protein from the bales of hay. But if you want to... Uh, if you want to feed um, whole corn, you might want to think about whether they're getting enough protein. So you have to look at what, what you have in reserves. I mean, uh, do you have alfalfa hay? Uh, if you don't have, if you only have grasses, it's got to be really good tender grass to get the protein. First cut grass probably isn't going to give you a lot of protein. And that, that's, so let's say you had Let's say you had first cut grass and it's not going to test really high. I think first cut uh, grass, uh, don't quote me on this, but first cut grass is going to test 7%, uh, 9% protein. I don't think you're going to go over 10 on first cut, unless there's a lot of alfalfa in that. But let's say we're just talking grasses, so there isn't a lot of protein there. If you're going to feed that with corn, you might consider 
about putting some uh, protein in that corn. Uh, soybeans, uh, even barley. Uh, barley is higher on protein than corn, I'm pretty sure. So that's how you can, you can shuffle your protein levels around. So sheep that don't get enough, don't get enough protein will get kind of bundled up uh, in, their, in their digestive system and they don't do maybe as good as they could do. Uh, but you might want to talk to a feed nutritionist or someone that has a lot more knowledge than me. But how we do it is, like I said, uh, the rat bales have a lot of protein. Corn uh, is a good match for it. It works really well for us. Uh, the other problem with corn is too, is we feed whole corn, okay? Uh, so we have to, uh, we rely on those mineral feeders. I don't know if you can see right there in that wall. So that's a mineral feeder and a salt feeder. Every pen has one of those salt mineral feeders. Since we feed whole corn, there's no mineral in that corn they have to go to those feeders. So to prevent that extra work to go to the feeder or to make a feeder or to look, feed separately salt and mineral, the way to prevent that is you could um, uh, get a ration made up with mineral and salt in the ration with some protein and then you wouldn't have to feed um, um, salt and mineral on the side. But I still recommend if you got salt and mineral in your feed, I still recommend to have free choice mineral feeders on the wall, just in case they want more. Uh, so it's, uh, I'm not saying not to feed it at all. You should always have it a free choice. But, uh, but, if you, uh, but if you had salt mineral in the grain, you wouldn't have to worry so much about the feeders, uh, mineral feeders. So there's lots of different ways to do it if you, uh, if you want to feed sheep. And what works for one person doesn't always work for someone else. So on this farm here, on this farm here, uh, there's going to be several hundred ton of corn come off the farm. I only have to save uh, a bunch of that corn in, in a tank, and I have corn all year round, and all the rest of the corn gets sold out. And I use my own soybeans that are, go away to get roasted and flaked for protein sources. And again, uh, there's several hundred ton of co uh, protein leaving the farm. I put, uh, I put about 10 tons of that protein in a, in a grain bank at the feed store that they put in the grain bank. There's no charge for that as long as it comes back to the farm. That's the way my dealership works with it. So all that stuff works really well for us. And it's a lot of planning and you have to, yeah, you have to look where you're going to go and how much money you want to spend on storage or is it just feasible to bring in a ration, a complete ration. So the fault, with, uh, the fault with buying grains or when grains leave the farm to get milled and then come back, basically that grain's in a double in price. So the way we can be a little more profitable is we have all the grain on the farm. We have our own mixer and grinder. So um, the feed dealership gives me a little bit of um, a little bit of heads up where, what I should be mixing, what I shouldn't be mixing. He's quite helpful with that, and I'm pretty independent. But there is a price to pay for that. It's an expense, uh, a setup fee, and you might not want to do all that, or you're not a big enough farmer where you couldn't justify doing all that. But uh, that's what I got to say about corn. So, so um, uh, whole corn basically doesn't have any mineral in it. So just be careful with that uh, if you're going to feed whole corn. But it works really well for us. I know some people say. Uh, some people say, well, you guys never have any trouble because you don't show it. To be honest with you, we don't have a lot of trouble with the sheep at all. Knock on wood, we don't have a lot of trouble. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If I had trouble with the sheep, I'm going to fix it. And it's not going to happen the second time. So that's, you can believe me or not believe Lynn and I, we don't have a lot of major problems. We, we, it runs quite, quite good here. Uh... So, I mean, we're not lying about that. We don't have a lot of health problems. Uh, uh, we have a few sheep that pass away for some stupid reason. Uh, and we do have some parasite problems, but not a lot. Um, milk fever is very, very rare. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, percent, percent is hanging on the sheep. Don't, don't clean up well after birthing. It's very rare. So, we don't have a lot of trouble. And like I said, if I had trouble we would fix it. It wouldn't happen next month. It wouldn't happen next year. 
Uh, so we've been we're at it for a long time, and we've got all the knots ironed out, and uh, it's working well for us. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But if anybody has any questions about what we're doing, you could ask Lynn and I, and we could explain to you the best to all know, our knowledge what we do, okay? So yeah, I just spoke about, I just said that we uh, feed all our uh, minerals separately, okay? And one of the reasons why we, uh, we feed the uh, minerals separately, we have a grinder mixer, okay? Uh, behind the tractor that grinds everything and mix all my creep feed. And the reason why I don't put salt mineral in that grinder mixer, because uh, mineral is corrosive and salt is even worse. It will eat that mixture right out. So where in a few years, it would just be rotted. So that's why we don't put mineral and salt in our rations, because it's corrosive. So we're just mixing whole corn and uh, sheep are fed uh, uh, sep separately on those uh, feeders right there in the wall there. Whoop, right there. Now this pen has two feeders one back there too and this side has two too one there and one right there and no i don't quote me on this uh but we probably uh we probably uh feed a 25 kilo bag of mineral every uh seven days six days in all the barns so i'm just combining all the barns together I would say every six or seven days, we feed easily 25 kilos of mineral, maybe even more. And it's the same goes for salt. So over here, we don't give any sheep any boluses at all. They don't get no selenium boluses, uh, no rumensin boluses, uh, no boluses at all. There's not a problem at all. So we don't do any of that at all. And you can see the shape of the sheep here. These are getting bred. And uh, these here could be a month in lamb already, for sure. And you can see the condition of them. Uh, they're in fantastic shape. So, uh, because I see in some other countries, they're cutting that, uh, they're cutting that fine grasses, or just straight grasses. But a lot of times that grasses doesn't, doesn't hold a lot of value. Uh, you want grass that has a little bit of stem to it, a little bit of coarseness. The grass has been matured a little bit. Uh, it had, the animals will do better on that, I've always found. Now, that's only my opinion, but uh, in Canada, uh, most of the time the hay is getting uh, more mature than what you want it because you just can't go fast enough in this country. But, uh, but you can see the condition of the sheep. These are all suffix. There's a ram we purchased. I don't think he lost any weight at all. He might have lost a little bit of weight, but not too much. But he's got a big group of ewes here. And that's all the suffix, and they're in great shape. And you look at the dorsets. These are all dorsets. Now that dorset there is a little too heavy because uh, she, for some reason she didn't have a lamb last year. So we're giving her another chance to have a lamb this year and then we'll make a decision on that ewe and find out what's going on. But all these ewes had lambs. There's a ram in here, the Dorset ram. He's a extremely, he's a extremely easy keeper. He didn't lose, lose a drop of weight at all. Hopefully he's got all his sheep bred. But uh, these, these, these Dorsets are uh, in fantastic shape, I think. If anything, I don't want them too, too much heavier because if a dorsal gets too heavy, you'll start to get prolactors before they have lambs. And it's just caused by over conditioning and, and they're too heavy. That's the ram right there. So these suffix get more grain than the dorsets. So I can keep a weight on a dorset easier and quicker uh, Suffolk needs a little more grain. Uh, if you have any questions about that, you can ask me to talk about that. But there's a reason why a Suffolk gets a little more grain. 
And it has nothing to do, it has nothing to do that they're a hard keeper. <laughs> That's not the issue here. But uh, if someone wants me to talk about that, I'll talk about that. Uh, why the suffix get a little more green and the dorsus get about half the green. Uh, there's a reason for that and, and I don't want people to, uh, to uh, misread uh, suffix. What's, what's wrong, girl? Uh. So that's done tonight. We're ready here. They can they can pick through that hay tonight. It's a little coarse. What's left? It's leftover hay, so it's a little coarse. Uh. But those guys are in fantastic shape, and uh, they just don't need another bale tonight. Uh. So we're gonna shut this barn down. Uh. Uh. There is Chinny right, uh, Chinny right there. Is it Chinny, I think? That's actually, that's actually a purebred Dorset. So I don't know where she gets the black chin from. But that's a beautiful, that's the first time you land right there. Anyways, even these suffix, they're in fantastic shape. So I guess my speech was tonight, my speech tonight was, uh, is uh, uh, just be careful of eating whole corn because it'll work if you do it right. If you don't do it right, it, it might cause more trouble than what you want to have. So, anyways, but if that doesn't answer all the questions, you can uh, you can ask us uh, Lynn or I, and we can talk about that in a little more uh, detail. But. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, so I guess what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is uh, it has to work right. So I always say when you're farming, people say uh, he farms right, he doesn't farm right. But I always say there's only one way to farm and that's the right way. So if, uh, if you're not farming the right way, <laughs> you probably couldn't improve. That doesn't mean that farmers don't farm right. It's just some farmers should do a lot better job than what they're doing. So, so there, yeah, it's like we showed all, all my corn. There's a 110 ton, 110 ton tank outside, and the corn is augered right in here. And this is where we pick it up to feed the sheep. And when we're making creep feed, this auger here takes the corn right out and goes out into the grinder mixer where we mix our own creep feed. So we mix our own creep feed too. And this is how we buy our salt mineral. So that's all salt, 10 bags of it. And we buy 10 bags of sheep mineral. Uh, every time we run short, we buy 10 and 10. I don't want to have any more kicking around. It's just a nuisance. So uh, this is a sheep mineral, specially made for sheep. And this is cobalt salt. It's a loose salt. It's not. It's not in lumps. Uh, sheep have to have loose salt. They don't have. To, they, they, they don't. Sheep don't do well on a on a block. So some people do that. Not what you should be doing. So I shut the whole barn feed room down because I don't want any raccoons in here. So all the doors are shut at night. And all I gotta do now is. Feeds Lynn, uh, Lynn's cat. I'm tired. It was the last day of haying. So I'm looking forward uh, to getting the machinery put away. And I have a bad eye right there. Because I got a piece of dirt in it and I couldn't get it out, but I think it's out now. It's actually looking pretty bad, isn't it? Anyways, I'm going to call this an evening. Thanks for supporting us. Really appreciate it. And I hope we have a good day. I hope we have a good conversation tomorrow if I can teach you something else or show you something else. And maybe someone can show me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs>